Hello, a little late night update video this week on some changes I've made to the OLC console game engine. I wanted to see if it was possible to use the mouse in the console, and it is. Now of course I'll be updating the game engine file on the GitHub so you can have a play with it yourself, but I thought it'd be useful to show you how to use the class and uh, what changes I've made to enable mouse input. The first thing that's different is I'm now also grabbing a handle to a standard input, and I'm calling this console in. Everything we've done so far has only required us to use a standard output handle, because we've just been drawing to the screen. At the bottom of the construct console function, uh, I've added an extra line which is set console mode, and this uses the console in handle we've just got. And what we want to tell Windows is that we want to receive some events, other than just keystrokes, on this console input. In this case, uh, we need to enable extended flags, enable window input, and enable mouse input. Now, really, we're not too interested in window input. That's to handle things like resizing. I'll look at that perhaps later on. And the enable extended flags was to overcome an annoying quirk with the default console loaded by Windows. If you've used the console game engine, you might know that if you've tried to select things with the mouse just to see what happens, it creates like a text selection box. This is uh, absorbing all of the events that we want to receive, so we need to disable that. And that's exactly what this enable extended flags does. Oddly enough, it's called enable extended flags rather than disable extended flags. But the one we're interested in for this video is enable mouse input. Handling the mouse is done in the main game thread function. And this is the thread that gets started when you call the start function on your derived one loan coder console game engine application. You can see the game thread calls on user create, and then it does some stuff to set up some timers so we know what the frame rate is and it can calculate the elapsed time. And then we handle keyboard input. So the keyboard gets done first. And I'm not using the events, I'm reading the direct state of the keyboard. But we'll leave keys for now and have a look at the mouse. It turns out Windows very conveniently gives us some functions for handling these events. So the first one is get number of console input events that have occurred since the last time that we've called this function. And if we've actually got some events, then we want to read them into a buffer. And it's quite important that we check that we've got some events first because read console input is blocking and that will completely ruin the real-time nature of the game engine. Once we've filled a buffer, in this case in buff, full of events, we want to go through it and process them. And we only care about mouse events. So a little for loop here goes through all of the events in the buffer and switches it based on the type, and in this case we're interested in mouse event. And if the event has indicated that the mouse has moved, we simply store the coordinates. M mouse pos x and M mouse pos y. As well as looking for mouse moved, as an event, we also need to look for the mysterious event zero, which the best I can interpret means something has happened, but I'm not sure what. Regardless, I wait for that event to occur, and I use it to store the mouse button states. So I've created a little for loop which goes through up to five mouse buttons, and trust me, this is a lot easier than the Windows SDK code. They've got very long constants called the uh, left button third from the right, and other such gibberish. But all these constants are really doing is shifting a bit in from the right, so I'm doing that as well in my loop. It's much tidier. Once we know the current state of the mouse buttons, to make them a bit more user-friendly in the game engine, because remember we don't have an event-based system, so I'm sort of emulating that in the background, I compare the current state to a background stored old state. And of course this allows me to see has the mouse button been pressed or has it been released. And just as we do with the keyboard, in fact it's exactly the same data object for M mouse, and uh, M represents the key, I'm calculating whether it's been released, pressed, or is it currently held. So let's have a look at using the mouse features. Well, I've used a typical int main, I've created a derived class one loan coder mouse test, and uh, it's 128 characters wide by 80 characters high, and each character is 12 by 12 pixels, and I start the game. I've got nothing in my onuser create, because all I'm going to do is create a cursor to follow around on the screen. And so in the onUserUpdate function, I choose to clear the screen, so I set it all to black, and I just use the mouse pos variables directly, x and y. And when you call the draw function with no arguments, it just draws a white pixel. Let's take a look. Excellent! So I've got a nice big black background, and I've got a very visible white cursor. To check the status of mouse buttons, we treat it just like the keyboard. So in this case, if the mouse button 0, which is your left click, if that's held down, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Let's have a look. So I've got the cursor, and I'm pressing the button, and we get a big white rectangle. I'll release the button. There we go. Mouse buttons, easy. With not much code, I can create a dragging rectangle, so I can select things on the screen. And why might this be useful? Well, suppose I had a selection of units, 
and I wanted to command some of them to go and conquer some land over here. It's much easier with the mouse than with the keyboard. See you next time.